All right, hello again, third grade angels. Here's our reading story this week. It is Stone Soup. And you can follow along with me right in your uh, treasures book if you like. It is page 283. 283. And <clears throat> this story has been retold and illustrated by John J. Muth. Three monks, Hawk, Locke, and Sue, traveled along a mountain road. They talked about cat whiskers, the color of the sun, and giving. What makes one happy, Sue? asked Hawk, the youngest monk. Old Sue, who was the wisest, said, Let's find out. The sound of a bell brought their gaze to the rooftops of a village below. They could not see from so high above that the village had been through many hard times. Famine, which means a time without food. Floods and war had made the villagers weary or tired and untrusting of strangers. They had even become suspicious of their neighbors. The villagers worked hard, but only for themselves. There was a farmer, a tea merchant, a scholar, a seamstress, a doctor, a carpenter, and many others, but they had little to do with one another. When the monks reached the foot of the mountain, the villagers disappeared into their houses. No one came to the gates to greet them. And when the people saw them enter the village, they closed their windows tight. <clears throat> the monks knocked on the door of the first house. There was no answer. Then the house went dark. They knocked on the second door, and the same thing happened. It happened again and again, from one house to the next. These people do not know happiness, they all agreed. But today, said Sue, his face bright as the moon, we will show them how to make stone soup. Ooh, we have a question. Make inferences. Now, making an inference is when you have to use clues from the story to figure something out. So our question is, how do the villagers feel about the monks? Now, the author doesn't come out and tell, tell us. The author doesn't say, hey, the monks feel, or the villagers feel this about the monks. We have to figure it out. And we can figure it out by how the villagers are acting. They're not opening their doors, are they? Even though the monks are knocking on the doors, they're not answering. They close their windows tight. So those are clues as to how the villagers feel about the monks. They probably don't trust them. Or they don't trust strangers, right? They like to keep to themselves. <clears throat> they gathered twigs and branches and made a fire. Oh, this is the monks here that they're talking about. They placed a small tin pot on top and filled it with water from the village well. A brave little girl who had been watching came to them. What are you doing? she asked. We are gathering twigs, said Locke. We are making a fire, said Hawk. We are making stone soup, and we need three round smooth stones, said Sue. And there's the brave little girl.
The little girl helped the monks look around the courtyard until they found just the right ones. Then they put them in the water to cook. These stones will make excellent soup, said Sue. But this very small pot won't make much, I'm afraid. My mother has a bigger pot, said the girl. The little girl ran home. As she started to take a pot, her mother asked what she was doing. The three strangers are making soup from stones, she said. They need our biggest pot. Hmm, said the girl's mother. Stones are easy to come by. I'd like to learn how to do that. There's the picture. See the villagers. Looks like they're starting to peek out their windows now. The monks poked the coals. As smoke drifted up, the neighbors peered out from their windows. The fire and the large pot in the middle of the village was a true curiosity. I bet that means it made them very curious. They were wondering what it was all about. One by one, the people of the village came out to see just what this stone soup was. Of course, old-style stone soup should be well-seasoned with salt and pepper, said Hawk. That is true, said Locke, as he stirred the giant pot filled with water and stones. But we have none. I have some salt and pepper, said the scholar, his eyes big with curiosity. He disappeared and came back with salt and pepper and even a few other spices. Sue took a taste. This time, the last time we had soup, Stones of this size and color, carrots made the broth very sweet. Carrots, said a woman from the back. I may have a few carrots, but just a few. And off she ran. She returned with as many carrots as she could carry and dropped them into the pot. Do you think it would be better with onions? asked Hawk. Oh, yes, maybe an onion would taste good, said a farmer, and he hurried off. He returned in a moment with five big onions, and he dropped them into the bubbling soup. <clears throat> now that's a fine soup, he said. The villagers all nodded their heads as the smell was very agreeable. But if only we had some mushrooms, said Sue rubbing his chin. And there they are making their soup. <clears throat> Several villagers licked their lips. A few dashed away and returned with fresh mushrooms, noodles, pea pods, and cabbages. Something magical ha began to happen among the villagers. As each person opened their heart to give, the next person gave even more. And as this happened, the soup grew richer and smelled more delicious. I imagine the emperor would suggest we add dumplings, said one villager. And bean curd, said another. What about cloud ear and mug beans and yams, cried some others. And taro root and winter melon and baby corn, cried other villagers. Garlic, ginger root, soy sauce, lily buds. I have some, I have some, people cried out. And off they ran, returning with all they could carry. Like the cat up there looking into the pot along with the people. 
<laughs> the monks stirred and the pot bubbled. How good it smelled. How good it would taste. How giving the villagers had become. At last the soup was ready. The villagers gathered together. They brought rice and, ste and st sorry, steamed buns. They brought lychee nuts and sweet cakes. They brought tea to drink and they lit lanterns. Everyone sat down to eat. They had not been together for a feast like this for as long as anyone could remember. After the banquet, oh, that's another word for a big feast or a big meal. So after the banquet, they told stories sang songs, and celebrated long into the night. Then they unlocked their doors and took the monks into their homes and gave them very comfortable places to sleep. In the gentle spring morning, everyone gathered together near the willows to say farewell. <clears throat> Thank you for having us as your guests, said the monks. You have been most generous. So guests, people who come to visit. Thank you, said the villagers. With the gifts you have given, we will always have plenty. You have shown us that sharing makes us all richer. And to think, said the monks, to be happy is as simple as making stone soup. There are the monks saying goodbye. And we have another inference question. This one says, How do the villagers feel about each other at the end of the story? Now remember at the beginning of the story, the villagers kept to themselves. They, they did work and they did jobs, but they, they kept to themselves. Now at the end of the story... They are working with each other now. They're out and about together, eating together, like on the pages before, and sharing together. So that is how the villagers feel about each other now. I, I think they trust each other more. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story and uh, use this story to help you answer the questions on the document. All right. Have a good and healthy day. Bye for now.